The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to our distance learning session. I'm Madame Dam Wagon Taku. I'm a senior guidance counselor. I'm, I'll be taking guidance and counseling for form three. That said, we're going to look at the overview of our program, the general presentation. We have the general presentation of the syllabus, objectives of the syllabus, expected competence, and previous knowledge. Presentation of the syllabus. Our syllabus is made up of three topics, which are the first, appropriation of study techniques, of second, observation of healthy lifestyle and attitude, and the third, the use of different information and communication channels. Our topic one, appropriation of study techniques, is made up of two subtopics, which are the knowledge of self and the techniques of studying. Our topic two, observation of a healthy hygiene life habits and attitudes, is made up of four subtopics, which are the first, pollution, the second, hygiene lifestyle rules, the third, the risks and perils linked to adolescent sexuality, the fourth, the risks and perils linked to consumption of psychoactive substance. And topic three, which is the use of different information and communication channels, is made up of three top subtopics, which are sources of information, the second, the notion and use of ICTs, and the third, the risk of poor use of ICTs. That said, we're going to look at the general objectives of our program. As we can see, from three is an intermediary class, and the topics chosen for this class are very rich to make sure learners grow up well and stay away from social problems. So our first general objective is learners know how to study new subjects in the curriculum. You know, in Form 3, some subjects will be added to the ones we've been doing in Form 1 and 2. So we're going to learn how to study these subjects. Our second objective is learners acquire knowledge on how to study better. No, Form 3 being an examination class, we need to know how to set our priorities and study very well so we can succeed in our exams. So we need to start from this base, which is from three, to know how we're going to study and pass our own level in form five. So for us to succeed, we need to start studying well in form three. Our next objective is learners manage better the teaching learning process and adapt better in the school milieu. So learners need to know how to manage their time, how to listen and take their notes, how to study at home, and how to get used to their school environment. Our expected outcome is adaptation in school and society at large. As students growing up or as adolescents, 
we need to know how to adapt, how to get used to our society and our school and how to go about it. So we know for us to succeed in life, we need to know how to be organized. And for that, we'll be able to succeed and to be able to be successful in life. That said, we're going to go to our previous knowledge, which is what was done in Form 2. In Form 2, we did we discover the school establishment. We told about our school environment, how it functions, and the different uh, educational stakeholders and their duties. Also, we were taught how to study. We're given techniques on how to study. And then also, we had observation of healthy hygiene, lifestyle, and attitude. You know, for our students to be neat and healthy and strong, they need to stay clean and they need to behave also properly. Then we also had elaboration of a school project. That brings us that we should not just be studying blindly, we should be focused and know what we want in life. When we have our school project, it's going to motivate us to study well and pass. Then we have assistance in the development of student personality. This one also helped students to know how to build up themselves on how to behave better as upcoming young boys and girls. And topic one for form three, appropriation of the study techniques takes us to, it has two subtopics as we already saw it, which is the knowledge of self one. And the knowledge of self has other subtopics or lessons as we're going to treat them progressively. The first is presentation of some types of memory. The second lesson, presentation of some types of intelligence. The third lesson, the concept of self-esteem and its manifestations. The, third, the next lesson, the advantages of self-esteem and the disadvantages or lack of self-esteem. We also have the management of school time. We have also the techniques of uh, studying. That's our second subtopic. And under that, we have the management of school time, which is very important to us. You know, as intermediary students, we need to know how to manage our time. We have the management of extracurricular time, that is time spent out of school. We have new subjects and study methods by groups of subjects. <laughs> That said, we'll be going to our lesson one, which is presentation of some types of memories. Okay, before we get to that, I'm going to give you that, I'm going to give you a rundown of our plan for the lesson, how the lesson will be presented and how it's going to go. We are going to get the expected competencies, what is needed, what we gain from the lesson. We get that previous knowledge, we get a life situation, we get learning activities, and then we have some exercise, and you know, at the end, we're going to have an assignment. So that said, we'll start with our expected competence, which is understanding what memory is all about and how information can be acquired and used at the right time. So students need to know what memory is all about. We'll be talking about memory. What is memory? They need to know what it's all about and how information can be gotten and used at the right time. So our previous knowledge, what we did in Form 2, or what was done in Form 2 is, we, the educational establishment was presented. That's the school. When we talk of educational establishments, we mean the school. The school was presented because for a student to succeed, you first of all need to know how the school functions. The head of the school, the stakeholders, his collaborators, and other services of the school and how it is and how it functions. So for you to succeed in school, you need to know about your school. Also, we saw the respect of internal rules and regulations. You know, each and every student has to respect the school rules and regulations. 
you can't just live in an environment and just go about life anyhow. There are rules set for that for each and every environment. So we need to we we we, the, we saw the school rules and regulations. Also, the management of time was taught, and we know that time is very important in both the educational and economic sector. For us to succeed in life, we need to know how to manage our time. For better management of time will make us to succeed. As students, if we manage our time well, we're going to succeed in our studies. But if we don't, we know the outcome that at the end, we're going to have difficulties. Also, study techniques of subjects taught was done in Form 2. And we saw that it's very important because if you don't know how to study, if you don't know how to be organized, you will not succeed. A good student, a student that needs to succeed in life, must be organized. And how, are you, how can you be organized as a student? You need to have a plan. You need to know how to study. You need to have your personal reading timetable. Okay, and then nextly, we, uh, the respect of social norms and values was studied. We know social norms and values are very important because it helps us to know how to live in, live in the society. When we respect social norms, values are what the moral principles or aesthetics that we gain after respecting this. It makes us to be acceptable in our society and not to be punished. Okay, that said, we'll come back to our lesson, which is presentation of some types of memory. When we look at the picture in front of us, what do we see? We see the brain of somebody. It's the memory of that person. That brain has so many, many, many activities in them, so many things. We shows our different activities, our different daily activities packed in our heads. Okay, that said, we're going to look at our real life situation, which is going to make us understand our lesson better. So you listen attentively to it. During a counseling session, a Form 3 student who failed in his exams burst into tears. According to him, he reads very well at home, follows his study timetable, does all his assignments, and is very attentive in class. However, he always forgets what he reads during exam. He is very confused and would like to know why his counselor advised him to work on his memory if, he's, if he must pass his exams. So I take it again. During a counseling session, a Form 3 student who had failed in his exams burst into tears. According to him, he reads well at home, follows his study timetable, does all his assignments, and is very attentive in class. However, he always forgets what he reads during exams. He is very confused and would like to know why his counselor advised him to work on his memory if he must pass his exams. Our learning activities. We have definition of concept. We have the three stages of memory. And we have types of memory. So we're going to start by defining memory. What is memory when we hear of memory? Memory is the ability to take information into your brain, store it, and recall it at a later time for use. So the ability to take information into your brain, you store it, and you recall it at a later time when you want to use it. That is memory. So we see that we all, we need to make good use of our memories if we need to succeed. Okay, memory is broken into three stages. We have the encoding, we have the storage, and the retrieval. So we have three stages. Encoding, the storage, and the retrieval. 
Okay, before we come to that, when we look at this diagram, it's just telling us how information, message is passed and received. For instance, when you say something, it goes, be it a sound or noise, it echoes first. The movement, how it moves from one stage to another before the message is well transmitted. So it's going to help us to understand better as we'll be explaining. So start with the first type of memory, which is the encoding. Encoding is the act of moving information from the environment into our brain unconsciously or consciously. That is, when we move information from our environment into our brain, be it consciously or unconsciously. For instance, when a noise is made, boom, we just react to it. If it's a danger sign, we can jump. So it goes to the brain and it tells us that this is danger or this is that we should be careful. So it just moves in, um, information to our brain. Information is encoded through sound, picture, or meaning. It requires paying attention to the information. For example, a phone number, like we already know our phone number. When someone asks your phone number or your mother's phone number, it's just automatic, it's already in your brain. You just give the, the, the phone number because the information had already been stored in the brain. You don't need to start thinking before you give it. So that's the encoding memory. That said, it would, when we look at this picture, it's a picture of our daily activity. How we get up from bed in the morning, our activities throughout when we go to bed at night. So looking at the picture, that things we just do with our memory, will not need to be told. At 5 a.m., when our alarm clock rings, we know we need to get up from bed. We make up our bed, we take our shower, we brush, we comb our hair, we put on our dress, our, our uniforms, and then we eat and we run to school. While in school, it's just normal, it's automatic. We know we have to study. We take our lunch at break time, we study, and then we come back home. Back home, we have other chores to do. We have eating, we eat, we clean, we play with our friends, and then we do our homework, and later on, at the end of the day, we go back to bed. So we see how the, 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 the human memory works with all these activities packed full. So we just take it as a routine that every day that is what I have to do. So now we go to the second time, which is the storage. The storage creates a record of the information received. Information can be stored for a very short period long period or a lifetime. So this storage memory is one that makes us to store information. For instance, if I asked you something of what happened last year in Form 2 or in Form 1 or primary school, you'll be able to tell me everything because of your storage, with the help of your storage memory. That's where information, because you go back to the storage and you get all the information or what happened there and you'll be able to recall or what happened on your 10th birthday is a storage memory that is going to help us get that. We also have the retrieval, which is a recall or recognition. The process of remembering information stored in the brain, so as the name goes, retrieval, it removes information stores in the brain. Information is brought back from the brain, depending on how it is stored. You know, some experiences always make us to store our information. When we think of it, we just go back. When we are talk, when we see something, it makes us to think of what happened to us. So that's what the retriever memory is all about. We we'll also see some types of memory. We have the sensory memory. We have the short-term memory, and we have the long-term memory. The sensory memory. This is the ability to look at an item and remember what it looks like. 
with just a few seconds. It receives information through the five senses. And we know the five senses are what? We have the sight, we have the hearing, we have the taste, we have the we have the sight, the hearing, the taste, the the this, uh, the, the, the mouth. Okay, then it receives information through the five senses. It's in, it makes us to think when we have information, we can easily receive it. We have the short-term memory. It is a conscious processing of information. It is information we are currently aware of or thinking about. That we just think about it for a while and it goes. It can only last for a few seconds or a few days. It doesn't stick in our mind. It cannot keep too many activities at the same time. Okay, then now we have the long-term memory. The long-term memory involves the storage and recall of information within a long period of time, be it days, weeks, or years. It can be conscious or unconsciously. Long-term memory is divided into two. We have the explicit, which is also the declarative memory, and the implicit or non-declarative memory, as we can see in the picture below. So the explicit memory, it makes us to be conscious. It helps us to remember our things. We're just conscious. And then the implicit is all conscious. So explicit or declarative memory is divided into what? We have episodic and semantic memory. Episodic memory is tied to your personal experiences, like when you celebrated your birthday or you had something that really did a remarkable thing in your life, you keep it, your personal experience. Then you can actively declare your answers to them. For instance, when they ask, when is your birthday? It's just automatic, you tell us the 7th of June. Okay, then they ask you, how did you spend your holiday? You don't even need anybody to tell you, you already know the answers. Those are all in your memory. They can also ask, why do you like your parents a lot? You have all the answers in your head. We have the semantic memory. Semantic memory is not tied to personal events. It's general. General facts and definition about the world. Example, how many tires does a car have? You just think and then you give. What color is a banana? How many continents are in the world? Those ones are not tied to your personal experiences. We have now the implicit memory, which is procedural. Memory enable, uh, uh, procedural memory enables you to unconsciously perform specific learned skills or habits or habitual responses. Example, like to ride a bicycle, to tie your shoelace, or to eat. Thus, human memory involves the ability to both preserve and recover information we have learned or experienced. A student's success in school would first depend on his understanding of how the human brain receives, transforms, and uses information. So we know for us to be succeed in school, we should be able to receive information given to us by our teachers, we should be able to transform it in our heads that we understand and know what to write, the right thing to write. And then also for the information given to us to remain in us so that we can use it later in life. We have our application exercises, which is we are going to ask questions. The first question, the process of keeping information in the brain for future use is called storage, encoding, or retrieval. So what's our, our real answer? Storage. What kind of memory involves the storage of brief events such as sight, taste, sound, sensory memory, short-term memory, long-term memory? Our answer is sensory memory. What is the main difference between the long and short-term memory? 
The short-term memory stores information for a short time, that's seconds to a few days, while the long-term memory takes information from the short-term memory and can store it for as long as a lifetime. What is the difference between the explicit and implicit memory? Explicit memory is a conscious, intentional recollection of information previous experiences and concepts. While it is their unconscious, while implicit is the unconscious or automatic use of memory without thinking about them. Which memory does our above student in the story needs to succeed in school? Long-term memory. You know, after this work, we can't go without having an assignment. So our assignment is, one, what is memory? Secondly, name the three stages of memory. And thirdly, what kind of memory is needed by students to succeed in their exams? You know, as good students, we need to know all that in order to succeed. A reference we have for this work, we have the Guidance Counselor's Term of Reference, we have our Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary, we have sources across the net, we have the www.parknotes.com, HTTP, Strong Education, like your dictionary, those were, that's where we had our sources for this work. Okay, that said, our next lesson will be presentation of some types of intelligence. Una tege si ma tege yop, una tege minga ma tege nyum, una tege ma jang ma tege ndom, ma ne tambia ninya ne njubia yen, ngani bana ma tege mot, ngani la kiri wa tege ndong, esa kina bia dinki do, ma ne tambia ninya ne njubia yen, tam tama mote tam zabike, Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 